Matty Graham here from Exponential Performance Coaching. Welcome back to another Whiteboard Wednesday. Today, we've got a question. The question is, why do I get a cough after a really hard training session or race? Let's take a look at it. So to truly understand why this coughing is happening, let's take a little bit of an in-depth look into the human lung and the human airways. So we've got our guy here, uh, obviously we've got our trachea that runs down and then it branches off into our lungs. Within our lungs here there are heaps of different networks of pipes that lead down and finally they lead down to our little alveoli or our little ear sacs. Now, some stats for you, there's 2,400 2, kilometers of airways in the human lung, that's a lot. And then as we get down, if you think, zoom in a little bit, down in our lung, there are all these little ear sacs. Now, the, people often think the lung are just like a balloon. It's not like that. Inside our lung, it's kind of like a sponge. If you can imagine a sponge, say it's this big, Inside it, there's all those little openings that water can get into. Think of your lung sort of similar. There's all these little kind of like broccoli or cauliflower-like air sacs where the air goes down. And the idea of those is that it gets down and it increases the surface area. So if you think of the surface area of a balloon, there's X, but then the surface area of a sponge, when you go into all of those little holes, are a lot greater. And when it comes to gas transfer, transferring oxygen into the blood, it's all about surface area. The more surface area there is, the greater the, uh, the transition of that air into the blood. So down all these little air sacs, we've got about 150 million of these guys, so that's a lot. If you open it all up, next time you're cutting over and open a human and you're getting the lung out, if you were to lay it all out, lay out all these little air sacs, It'd be about 70 square meters, which is about half the size of a tennis court. So we're talking some pretty big surface area. The thing with all these little air sacs is they're very, very thin. And the membrane, or the lining of them, is very sensitive. And the same with all of our ear pipes. Sort of our trachea down into our bronchioles. Those are all very sensitive. And when we start exercising at a hard intensity, the amount of air flow through those airways and down into these little air sacs cranks up a lot. Let's have a look at some numbers over here. So if we're thinking about our breathing rate, how many times we breathe per minute, our tidal volume, this is how uh, deep we breathe, how many litres of air we take in per breath, and our pulmonary ventilation, this is how much air goes into our lungs and out per minute, so liters per minute. So at rest, our breathing rate's usually around 12. These are just some um, sort of specific ballpark numbers here. They do vary a little bit. At 12 at about rest, when we go into moderate exercise, that increases to about 30 breaths per minute. And then vigorous exercise, around about 50 breaths per minute. Tidal volume, how deep we're breathing, how much sort of how, how many litres we're consuming per breath. At rest, it's about half a litre, and this quickly increases. Moderate exercise, about two and a half litres per breath, and vigorous exercise, about three litres per breath. And then if we uh, combine those together, we get pulmonary ventilation. This is how many litres per minute of air we're taking in. This shouldn't be confused with VO2, which is the volume of oxygen you're consuming. Anyway, so... At rest, we're breathing about six liters per minute, and then this really increases. Moderate exercise, about 75 liters per minute, and vigorous exercise, 150 liters per minute. So you can imagine, when you're doing a really hard training session or a race, you've got 100 and somewhere between 75 and 150 
litres of air going in and out of your lungs every minute. So if you are going to do that for a long time, even 10 minutes, there's a lot of air coming in and out of the lungs and all that does is irritates the lining of the airways and the lining of the air sacs because like I said they're quite a delicate tissue. So the more you breathe, the faster you breathe, the longer you breathe for, the more of this irritation occurs. And there's some other factors that increase this irritation. If it's really cold, so cold air will irritate them more. If the air is very dry, we've all had those experiences where your inside of your mouth and your throat just get really, really dry. All of the moisture gets sucked out of it. Same thing's happening down in your airways. That helps that and promotes that irritation. And any allergens that are in the air, um, such as dust, pollen, any pollutants, that's going to irritate the airways as well. So when it comes to that hard training session or that hard race, the reason you're getting that cough afterwards, kind of like a smoker's cough, is that your airways and are just irritated from this huge amount of breathing that you have been doing. If you've ever done um, an ind individual pursuit on the track or a sprint in a kayak or a middle distance running race, you probably would have experienced this cough afterwards. So it's nothing to be too concerned about. This irritation will subside uh, naturally. So there you have it. This is why you cough when you're doing a very hard, intense training session or a race. Keep those questions coming. I want to keep giving you the good information so you can train harder, but most importantly, smarter.